Good evening and welcome. I'd like to start uh, the January 13th, 2020, our first meeting of the year, call to order. And we're actually starting on time. How about that? Uh, roll call, please. Hussein Berry. Here. Mary Lane is here. Roxanne McDonald. Here. Michael Mead. Here. Adel Mosab. Here. Mary Petchlikoff. Here. James Thorpe. Here. Next item, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ms. Zahra Zurek, principal of Becker Elementary, will introduce students who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Good evening. We have three students here from Becker Elementary today. I'd like to introduce them. My name is uh, Ali Kashesh, and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Yara Abedi, and I'm in fifth grade in Becker Elementary. I'm proud to be one of the Dearborn School students. My name is Hedy Abedi, and I'm in third grade at Becker Elementary, and I'm proud to be a Becker student. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good job. Thank well you. done. Ali. Love the bow tie, Ali. It's good. <laughs> Yada. Good job, Amor. They all look great. Head. Good job. Thank you very much. One more round of applause. Yeah. <clears throat> Before we go on to the next uh, item, uh, I'd like to say something. Uh, uh, definitely want to thank all my friends and family members for being here tonight, but there's a special person in my life. We're trying to keep it on time, remember. What's that? Keeping it on time, remember? You bet, you bet the over <laughs> or under. But there's a special person in my life that I want to take this opportunity. I don't get that, that opportunity that often. Uh, my father. My father does so much for his family, and just as important, he does so much for the community. He pretty much, 30 years ago, adopted McDonald School and other schools, so uh, I'm gonna keep this short. Uh, Baba, I love you, and thank you for everything you do for our family and community. Thank you, I love you. President Barry. Yes. I Personally. can't see him. Did he stand up? Uh, no. Can he, can he stand, can he stand up? up? Would he stand up for us? Yeah. <laughs> he definitely wasn't expecting this, and I wasn't either, so I didn't even know he was coming here, and I think there's a certain that we'll be in trouble later on for <laughs> causing this. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Nofela, thank you. I think you're the troublemaker, but we'll go on to the... To the next item, please. Superintendent's update, agenda items. So I'm going to call up Abe and Zainab to come up for retirements, and then I'm going to let them stay for another announcement um, on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Now for the donations. A donation of $2,500 has been offered to Edsel Ford High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for winter percussion ensemble. A donation of $1,000 has been offered to Duval Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for music flip, form, flip forms. A donation of $1,100 has been offered to Dearborn High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for End the Stigma Mental Health Awareness Campaign. A donation of $1,000 has been offered to Lori Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a hydration station. A donation of $375.45 has been offered to Salina Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for seeing yourself in a story. A donation of $646 has been offered to Salina Intermediate School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for an Apple TV for an effective co-teaching class. A donation of $179 has been offered to Salina Intermediate School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for enhancing lessons through te technology. 
A donation of $84.50 has been offered to Lindbergh Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used to replace PTA purchase document camera. A donation of $2,000 has been offered to Lindbergh Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for electronic renewal. A donation of $2,000 has been offered to Salina Intermediate School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for Inside Out Literacy Project. A donation of $1,000 in Kroger gift cards has been offered to Long Elementary School by the Dearborn Elks to be used to support families through blessing and backpack distributions. A donation of $1,250 has been offered to Fortin High School by Aaron Fershinia to be used for a scholarship in memory of 1948 Fortin graduate Doris Nock. We have uh, one retiree today. It's Charles Silver, 26 and a half years of service. Thank you. We'll let you go ahead and talk about the uh, planning from the Student uh, Advisory Council, Superintendent's Advisory Council, what's planned for next Monday on Martin Luther King Day. On the third Monday of January, we have a national holiday commemorating Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He stood up against injustices with peace and fought hatred with love. I would like to personally invite everyone in attendance to join us in remembering what his message and work was about on Monday, January 20th at the Islamic Center of America starting at noon. I and other Dearborn Public School students worked together to plan a collaborative effort to honor MLK Day as a day of service and giving back to the community. Please make a difference in someone's life by joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very proud of the council and the work they do and, and the fact that they've made it a meaningful day where they take action the last uh, year they changed it. so. I have a question, but they've already sat down. Um, you have something planned for Karamatsu Day, correct? Do you do you know what those plans are as well? Can you share or not at this time? Can Can you step back up to the okay. microphone? Because <laughs> nobody else will hear you. Yeah. Um, so I believe we'll be planning that at our next SSAC meeting, which is this Friday. Okay. But um, I believe it'll be in Edsel Ford this year. Uh, we rotate between all high schools on which we'll sit. I think and it might be at the Berry Center is what I read, but. Mm -hmm. We rotate okay. around okay. the high schools, but I'll let you know at the next meeting for sure. Okay, wonderful, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, actually I have it here on the calendar. It's the 30th at 12 p.m. at the Michael Berry Center. Okay. And um, because she's on different committees, they have different responsibilities, so what happens on the council is that you'll probably have other students that'll be planning that while she's involved in other things. Okay, terrific. Yeah. I just was wondering if you had anything you. I planned already. Thank, thank you, you Zainab. Trustee Moser? Yes, uh, President Berry, thank you. Um, just uh, to, to the students and to everybody who will be joining us on MLK uh, Day, it's an amazing day of action that our students are organizing. Um, I believe the first year they did it is um, branded the Real Dearborn, and it was an amazing rally that they did at the Civic Center um, of bringing many different voices together to talk about justice and to talk about social change. And that's uh, amazing things that, that we need to embrace uh, in Dearborn. So I'm glad that our students are, are taking this opportunity to remember somebody who has given so much to our country and um, to remember his message of always seeking justice and uh, seeking uh, social change and better lives for Americans. So I salute all of the students who are organizing it. Great job, and I'm looking forward to an, another successful, amazing event by our students. Thank you. We're still on the agenda. Yes. Um, Yes, and I just want to comment uh, congratulations to Chuck Silver and thank him for all of his uh, years of service in the district, uh, one retiree this month. So we wish him all the best and we thank him. And I will be sending, as I always do, a handwritten card to Mr. Silver. And that's it for agenda. Next item. Non-agenda items, early college, collegiate academy, dual enrollment. So um, before I move on, I'm going to have Ms. Peterson come up, but I just want to uh, congratulate um, <coughs> all the officers, Trustee uh, or, um, Thorpe, um, Trustee McDonald, um, Trustee Lane, and President Barry. Congratulations, Thank and you, I sir. look forward to working with you, uh, you. in your new role. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And so I'm going to ask um, Ms. Peterson to talk about some very positive, and I know um, it's been shared in board briefs, and also I shared it with uh, college president uh, Cavaluna um, and he was very pleased to see some of this data and again this is just another um, 
aspect of our great partnership with the Henry Ford College under the leadership of the board. Quick interruption, I, Shannon, please. Uh, uh, family and friends, you're more than welcome to stay, but I understand this is be, <laughs> might be a long meeting, so I thank you very much. But like I said, welcome to stay, but you don't have to. He's thank saying you. feel free to leave. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, my translator? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Shannon, go ahead. No, that's okay. So this is also another data point for whether our students are college ready. And I'm pretty excited to show, and for Dr. Cavaluna, these numbers are updated, so this is the data you want to use. It connects to our strategic plan. This is part of uh, one of the look-fors or the artifacts of Gold II is if we are um, increasing career readiness and college readiness through dual enrollment. So our students last fall semester took just under 2,000 college classes. And for our early colleges, so I have early colleges in one column here and the Collegiate Academy in another. Our early colleges, just as a reminder, are high schools on the Henry Ford campus. The students enter that high school right after eighth grade. They have to be reading at at least the sixth grade level and passing all their classes in eighth grade and they enter a lottery to get in. For our health system early college, we have over 400 um, people apply for the lottery. So we have 89% of our students getting a C or higher, which C is what transfers in the Michigan Transfer Agreement to other universities and four-year colleges. But you know, almost half of our students end up with A's in college coursework. And our Collegiate Academy, those students enter our five-year early college program after the 10th grade. So they have to take the PSAT. And any student who meets the benchmarks for PSAT in the 10th grade and are on track to graduate are offered this scholarship from Dearborn Public Schools to do a five-year program with uh, the Henry Ford College and Dearborn Public Schools. And just under 50% of those students are getting A's in their classes. And these include the second, we call it the 13th year, so they enter college in the Collegiate Academy in the 11th and then the 12th and the 13th year. And there, many of them are finishing associate degrees or getting certificate programs, so it's quite rigorous. Our dual enrollment students, we have another group of students, almost 1,000, between our three comprehensive high schools that dual enroll. And 94% of those students get a C minus or higher. And I don't, so the difference is in the, in the collegiate academy and the early college, they are taking, there's a whole year that's much higher and more rigorous college coursework. So that's not to take anything away from the great things that they're doing. They're getting associate degrees and certificates, but 60% of our high school students that are in the high school and taking dual enrollment in 11th and 12th grade are earning A's at the college. So this is great news and great work for, of our students and the college staff and our district staff. Thank you. Appreciate it, Ms. Peterson. And again, thank you to the... <laughs> and we continue to expand those programs and offer those for our, our students in the community. Trustee Moser. Thank you, President Barry. Um, just on uh, something that I noticed in the community and talking to many parents, and uh, Dr. Miliko, maybe we can definitely work on this for the next year, um, is how do we explain those different programs to the parents? I see a lot of parents having very, they have either a lot of information or conflicting information, and I know we have something on the web page that is the viewable for the different options for as far as if if you think that your child is going to go to early college or they're going to go into the <coughs> collegiate academy what does that mean um, so that's the first point the second point is that so how do we make that information very available to the parents especially because i get the students are going to be part of the decision they obviously have to show interest but the decision is going to be made by the parent and the child mm -hmm. or the student. Um, so we need to make sure that they know exactly what they're going into, especially that they lock themselves in sometimes if they commit to a program. And we need to also look into, okay, what if into they get into the early college, but they feel like, okay, that's, this is not what I want to do. Do they have the option of actually leaving that program. They do, know. and we do secondary options assemblies for every one of our eighth grade students. We go to the, I, I go with a team to every middle school, and I, uh, I offer 
and end up at most of our middle schools for parent meetings and they arrange them at different times. Our high school counselors also, by law, we have to do an AP meeting, mm -hmm. um, a dual enrollment meeting, so mm -hmm. those are also offered per, for parents now, as well. Now, we have all of that information on our website, I just checked, we do mm -hmm. have that. And we do go to schools to do meetings. Right, so is there a way, do we have it both in Arabic and English, do you know? The, the secondary options is being translated right now. It okay, was updated great. and that's, being translated. That's, that's great to hear because that's where most of the questions are from meetings, the Arabic speaking have parents that they don't know. You talk to them, this is the Collegiate Academy, no, the, and then they confuse both. They don't know mm -hmm. the difference between both. And I just hope that we're very clear. I, we have amazing program, amazing programs here in the district. I just want the parents to know exactly what they're going into with their child when they make this very important decision for them. So whether way we make like a demo online or they could do it as, even as a game, something innovative where they can do it, you go online and they check their secondary options. And to all of the parents watching, this is very important that you do their research as well. You have to really do a series of meetings. It's not just going to be one shot of I read about it, okay, I know. You actually have to come and ask and talk mm -hmm. to your counselors. But that's something that I always get is parents asking me all the time, and I obviously direct them to the necessary people, but we need to be more clear and also ways of, if the student gets into the collegiate, can they pull out set a year in, a year or two? I don't know if that's an, a, the, even an option. The early colleges in the collegiate academy, those they are probably the most individualized mm -hmm. as far as scheduling. And Mr. Gothro, Ms. Bazzi, and Mr. Fadlala are in contact with parents throughout because every semester is, is completely individualized to the program that they're taking. Right. So, so there's a lot the students, of contact. If they find themselves like, this is not what I want to do, they we, can change They can course. easily go back to their home high school. Okay, okay, that's good to hear. Trustee Lane? Uh, yeah, and that was the point that I wanted to uh, clarify for everybody. I don't think we should characterize it as uh, students that are 13, 14, 15 years old locking themselves in. We don't track students. It, and I know of some students who entered a program, found out, no, this isn't for me, and they return to their home high school. So I just want to, to have everybody clear that we don't put students or students don't put themselves in a program and then they can't return to something right. else. I okay. mean, the goal is hear. for them to succeed. Mm -hmm. If they don't Absolutely. find a match, then they're not locked in. Okay, correct. Trustee Petrikoff? I wanna also <clears throat> recommend when you talk about parents not understanding or whatever, one of the things that we see um, doesn't seem to occur as often as we would like is open house and parent-teacher conferences. This is a strong opportunity to have a lot of these questions answered Absolutely. then, to explore the, the, the things you could consider for your student to participate in, in a variety of ways, not just the academies or the collegiate uh, programs. Um, and we don't have enough parents attending these uh, conferences at all. And that's where they need to take advantage of um, the opportunities to ask those questions, to look at the resources we have available and the programs that we're offering. And quite frankly, um, the parents have to um, own that and, be, and, and um, start attending programs that we offer at the school to help them um, get the information that would help their students. Trustee McDonald? This is piggybacking off of what uh, Trustee Peschelkoff just said. Another issue similar that we had in the past, I know, were students who wanted to stay at their home high school, so they weren't really giving the information to their parents um, because they didn't want to jump into something they were unsure of. And I know with just word of mouth, things are getting better in that area, and also the fact that now we send out to the parents the scholarship letter. Right. Does that seem to have alleviated some of that issue? Well, our first cohort was 40 students in the Collegiate Academy, and our last three have been, hovered at about 120 to 130 students okay. in the cohort. So, so that's it has helping. increased. Yeah. Plus, with word of mouth and people are right. understanding the value of the program. Right. Do you still think that students are kind of not wanting their parents to get the information? I, not I don't think so. Okay. And I have been to four middle schools so far this year. Um, and attendance has been 40, I think, it, I think there was 40 or 50 parents at Bryant, a little less at some other schools. Um, 
He did. I, I was sick the day Lori did theirs, but we had a nice turnout there as well. Wonderful. And some of the parents showed up to the student assemblies as well. It, I always yeah. tell the principals, it doesn't matter to me if there's room in the auditorium. Would love. I just want to just want to update. Uh, uh, let my colleagues know that we're still under superintendent update. Here. Oh. <laughs> so this was just information. Just an, this was just information on enrollment. <coughs> okay. But Dr. Maliko, it sounds like this board is hungry for more information. So maybe at the next maybe meeting we report. can bring a report. At that point, absolutely. When the administration brings a report, they're able to answer our questions. Okay. I didn't want to interrupt anybody, but especially we at the first meeting, roll. I don't want anybody to change their mind. So, okay. We'll let you finish your okay. report. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Uh, so just going down, I have just have some positive announcements that I want to make, um, and some of this has already gone out, um, social media and otherwise. Um, we had Salina Elementary and Fortson that were finalists for the National Title I Distinction, uh, Distinguished School Award. Um, we had two of the eight uh, nominees then from the state. They nominate eight every year. Last year we had four of the eight, if you may recall, and actually Maples was awarded. So although they didn't get the actual final award, they only give out two. Uh, just getting the recognition of the final eight is very positive. So congratulations to both of those schools and the schools that received them last year. I also want to commend uh, Mr. Wall, the board, the, um, the entire district for uh, appropriate budget and uh, transparency, fiscal management. Uh, second year in a row, um, you guys heard about the uh, clean audit last month. Mm -hmm. And now we again uh, came out after the last board meeting, but we got the Marriott Meritorious Budget National Award from the uh, uh, National Association, very high caliber. It's a lot of work, a huge booklet. Some board members may have remember the PDF. Um, and so I want to commend Tom and the entire de his department and the whole district because it's really a teamwork. So uh, I also just want to mention I had uh, Drew and Paul, uh, Palmira who came and met with me today from GLP Associates. Um, there was a golf outing in the summer that I missed when I was on vacation, but David and Tom went, went to that, David Mustin and Tom Wall, and it was a fundraiser for student scholarships. So they came and delivered a $5,000 check uh, that will be channeled over the foundation. It's something they give to the outgoing superintendent of the year from Michigan. They do it every year, and so I think David and Tom, I don't know how well they golfed, but they, they contributed <laughs> to the event, and uh, anyway, uh, it was really positive, so I'll be sending that over to Chastity, and then I get to direct what the money is for, likely scholarships or other student-focused uh, events. So I want to thank them for, for stopping in this afternoon, coming from Lansing. Uh, and last thing, I ha or two things. Um, the black box, I was there, there's an opening, and I think Eric was going to put it up, but I was there on Friday, and it goes until February 1st. It was a very positive, uh, it's a gallery over on Monroe, and it's uh, some of our teachers that actually run it. Um, and uh, we have all of our different school students. I think there may have been HFC students, and it was really positive. It was packed in on Friday, and there was a lot of pictures, and so it was a very positive. So I encourage individuals to go and check out our student art artwork. How long is that exhibit going on? It, the... It says it's open until oh, it? February, the current exhibit till February 1st. Oh, I see it on the screen. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it had a very positive dialogue with our gifted, very gifted students. And the last thing I just want to wish everyone a happy new, new year. I did send out a letter to the staff, and I had a, a video message that I sent out to the community as well. But I just want to wish all the community and everyone a happy new year. And as the new year started, my school visit started up uh, last week. And, very happy to see our students in the school. So I wish everyone all the best for a great year in, in 2020, and I look forward to working with the board and the new officers. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Recognition acknowledgments, empty bowls. <coughs> and we have Miss Briggs, I believe, is here, and her team. Speaking of art. <laughs> Good evening and happy School Board Recognition Month. I'm Susan Briggs, the Dearborn Schools Art Resource Teacher. Good evening, Jenny Domino, Dearborn High School. Monica Kavitsky, Dearborn High. Paige Bruce, Gear Park. I was going to talk about the Black Box Show, but thank you, Dr. Oh. Maliko. <laughs> it was a really great event, and it is up till February 1st. There's an artist talk back um, this Saturday at 1, if anyone's interested. But I hope everyone can go see it. It's really supportive of the art department. 
Um, the art department's 28th annual Empty Bowls event was held on November 25th at Park Place Banquet Hall. Empty Bowls was started in Bloomfield Hills in 1990 by Etzel Ford High School alumni and now retired art teacher John Hardham and his wife Lisa Blackburn. This service learning project showed that art can make a real difference. Clay bowls were created in Mr. Hardham's ceramics class. Students invited family and friends to enjoy a simple meal of soup and bread, and a $5 donation was suggested. At the end of the meal, the guests each chose an empty bowl to take home as a reminder of the hunger issues in our world, and the money was donated to help feed people in the community. The next year, now retired art teachers Wendy Sample and Audrey Wilkins started Dearborn School's art department <coughs> empty bowls, and we've been holding them ever since. And we had a really great turnout this year um, at this event as well, and we set a district record by raising $4,000. Um, this was from bowl pre-sales at schools, donations at the event, and from a tin can raffle. Proceeds were given to Gleaners Food Bank and Dearborn's Blessings in a Backpack, and they both benefit the Dearborn community. I'd like to thank Wendy Sample for all of her help. Everyone who came to the event, many of you came, I appreciate it volunteers and participating art teachers and students for making this event a huge success. Donations were made by Park Place, Starbucks, Blick Art Supply, Sattva Massage and Yoga, Detroit Institute of Arts, Motawi Tiles and Roven Ceramics, Michigan Bread Company baked the bread this year. The idea of Empty Bowls, which began here in Michigan by a Dearborn Public Schools graduate, now has events that take place in every state in America and 22 countries to help feed the hungry. The art department would like to give the school board, Dr. Maleko, and the executive directors a clay bowl pin made by Dearborn High School students. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you and for your continued support of Dearborn School's art department. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a great event, and yeah. I'm glad that I was able to attend as we always do, and I know we had trustees. Trustee there McDonald was there. Yes. Uh, do you know who else was there? I was Trustee there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Trustee uh, Thorpe was there. We were there Trustee when uh, Congress, Congresswoman W. Yes. Yeah. came, and she actually took, and she, we, we had a conversation about it. These ones have pins on them, but she took a be kind because she wanted to take that back to Washington. <laughs> and, and I explained to her to glue a magnet, yeah. one of the double sides, so that she could wear it on her because she says, I really need this in Washington, the be kind one. So I've been looking forward to pictures of her. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your continued work with this program. Thank you. Great program. Absolutely, it's a great program. Next item, please. We've done commendations. We, did, we yes. have not done commendations. Okay, so we did, it's commendations uh, donations. then. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. Commendations. Commendations. Yes. We have names. Is there someone coming? Yes. We have names. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Yasmeen Berry. I am from the Henry Ford Early College, and I'm in the honors program. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Talib, and I'm in the radiographer program. Welcome. Congratulations to Dearborn High and Etzel Ford High School students who competed at Michigan Thes Thespian Festival in December. All the students who earn superior ratings are invited to audition for the Michigan Youth Arts Festival and qualify for competition at the National Thespian Festival. From Dearborn High, superior ratings were awarded to musical theater duet Olivia Kirk and Sophia Wheeler and to musical theater group Caleb Reese, Adriana Viscami, Oliver Angel, Sophia Palace, Kovu Bido, Olivia Kirk, Sophie Wheeler, Nora Karub, and Sam Smaley. Certificates of excellence were given to Caleb Reese and Adriana Viscami for musical theater solo performances, Reggie Simmons and Kovu Batani for monologue performances, and Victoria Irish and Nora Karub for duet acting performance. For Etzel Ford, superior ratings were received by Nora Heaton and Abby Pitts for duet acting performance, Abby Pitts for monologue performance, and Nate Herman for musical theater solo performance. Certificates of excellence were received by Andrew Bard for monologue performance and Nora Heaton for musical theater solo performance. Two teams were recognized for musical theater duets, including Maya Moreau and Lily Canclers and Gianna Larini and Nate Herman. Also, EFHS senior stage manager Abigail Mullen was offered more than $172,000 in scholarships. Commendations to Fortson Athletic Director Jeff Gildias and to Fortson staff for their part in December Beaumont student heart health checks at the school. 200 students from 94 schools were screened that day. 
Of those, 158 were designated as play, 36 were recommended to follow up with their physician, and six were told to stop sports until they saw a physician or cardiologist. Commendations to STEM bots. The STEM middle school robotics team qualified for state competition at Macomb Community College in December and then took ninth out of 520 teams in the state. Thank you to coach Ms. Lauren Roberts, AK Steele, the volunteer industry partner, DHC staff, and all the parents that pitched in to help. Recommendations to Salina Elementary and GSRP staff for opening the 30th GSRP classroom in the district. Special thanks to Amy Madaka, Julie Wilson, Jomana, Nadia Berry, Sue Stanley, Karen Berryman, and all GSRP teachers. The district was awarded additional slots in early November that resulted in a December 9th opening, the fastest opening of a classroom in Dearborn history. 16 more students are being, being served for a total of 480 full-day preschool students. Commendations to Howard Elementary. On one Friday in December, the school was able to raise $622 for Goodfellows by, by collecting donations during arrival and dismissal times. Commendations to two students at River Oaks for their assistance to help another student who had a seizure during a musical performance. The students acted quickly to help their classmate and ensure he did not fall off the risers. Thank you to all the students who were taking part in their performance for remaining calm and carrying on the performance. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank job, you. Lord. One second. Yeah. Trustee Lane. Uh, yes. Did, <coughs> did I hear correctly that, that you just read that six students were told not to participate, participate in athletics? Yeah, uh, it was for the health checks, correct? For yeah, Beaumont? yeah, yes. for the health checks. That's like six students who could have had a life-threatening incident that didn't need uh, the defibrillators, even though we have them and we know how to use them now. I mean, that's just amazing. And uh, I mean, it just makes my, I mean, it really, that's was, incredible. Was this as a result of the um, student yeah. health event that we had yeah. at yeah. Fortson? Yeah, and there were what, 28 Sponsored students that were told yeah. to seek professional help, correct? Yeah. 36, wow. okay. These wow, that's just, just really, that's, that's really terrific. Wow, absolutely. Yeah. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Lane, we always know how to use the defibrillators. Oh, uh, well, use it. they actually instruct and you how to use them. Speaking of that them, subject, so. I know yes. we gave some recognition a couple meetings ago, mm -hmm. but uh, Mr. Ernie Oz is in the audience, and he was a big help yes. in that oh, program. Really story. So, Mr. Oz, thank you very much. Uh, before you go on. Yes. Uh, the Finance Committee was updated by Mr. Wall that next year, Mr. Oz, if you're, I know you're he's back there. Yeah, he's still here. He's next year, the, the defibrillators need to be replaced. So uh, <laughs> since, we're, since we're on topic, we may as well mention oh, that as well. Thank In other words, you. don't go too far. We yeah. need you. Yeah, <laughs> stay around. <laughs> next item, please. Oh, sorry. That's sorry. me, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, gavel presentation. So, uh, trustee... Petlichkoff, um, I have a statement and we have a gavel here. I want to thank you for your outstanding work as board president last year. I appreciate your leadership, advice, guidance, and most importantly, your time. You have always made yourself available to participate in school and community events, but in addition, you are always available to provide leadership and guidance regarding critical decisions related to our schools. You are a person that believes in your convictions, and above all, you are passionate about the betterment of this school district and providing a high-quality learning experience for all students. I have learned a great deal from you this past year and appreciate your ability to clearly share your opinions and perspectives. Truly, thank you very much for the outstanding work you did as thank board you. president. Thank you. I would like to go ahead. I would also like to add, we had a very exciting year last year. Yeah, right? I, I don't I mean, wish it a, on we you. We had a board, <laughs> board member appointment. We went out for a bond. Uh, we rolled out our new food service program. And we had many, many parents come to us with issues. And we always welcome parents to come to talk to us when they feel like they need to. So you handle that very well. But I'm hoping all the excitement went away with 2019. <laughs> well, what I would like to say is I would like to remind all the parents who are watching and who are in the audience um, that we still remain a board of seven. We have authority as we act together and to remind everyone to not just touch base with one board member, but rather communicate with all of us so none of us are missing any important information or concerns um, and that we can all work together because we can't act independently and we need your help in um, it's a two-way street with the communication 
So just, just remember, while we designate the board president as our um, voice for the public uh, board so we don't miscommunicate anything, we all still need to be in the same um, conversation. Yeah, thank you for your fairness and your professional leadership last year. Trustee well, thank Lane? You. I was just going to say the same, same thing that uh, Trustee Petrenkoff just finished with. I mean, the board president normally replies to emails on behalf of the rest of us. So when we don't reply, it's because we're deferring to the board president. Of course. Anybody else? Can I have the... Do I need to move? <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> that would be a marriage. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll go ahead. Well, wasn't to be. I should be asking myself that <laughs> instead of dozing off. See, see, I'm drinking this All right. Should I have this for the rest of the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we do have some other opportunities, yes. <laughs> Next item, please. Board appreciation. So January is school board appreciation month, and I believe Ms. Briggs had mentioned it as well. On behalf of our students, staff, and community, I would like to thank our board trustees for the enduring dedication to public education. As superintendent, I truly appreciate the diversity of experience and professionalism this group of trustees brings to the table. They're very knowledgeable about the workings of our district and the latest issues impacting education. Oh, I have worked with them the past, this past year on several important projects, including the renewal of our strategic plan, budget planning for 1920 school year, and most importantly, addressing our infrastructure and capacity needs that ultimately led to the bond proposal this past November. Although the outcome of the election was not favorable, the board did a tremendous amount of work providing leadership throughout the entire process leading up to and during the bond campaign. I look forward to continuing that work as we move forward to develop a modified plan. For those who may not be aware of our board members not only oversee the 21,000 students and more than 2,700 employees in our district, they are also trustees of Henry Ford College. And I, uh, I know President Cavalloon is here and he reiterates similar words and I know you'll have your chance next week. <laughs> um, this means that they must give twice the amount of time to their job as other board members in our state. They evaluate both the superintendent and the college president, attend twice the number of meetings, and must keep abreast of issues, laws, and legislation impacting both our district and the college. School board members serving the students in the Durham Public Schools are the following. Trustee Roxanne McDonald, she has served six years on the board after being elected in November 2011. She did not serve in 2017 and 18, but was re-elected in November 2018. Her current term expires at the end of 2024. Trustee James Thorpe has served three years on the board after first being elected in November 2016 to a partial term. He was re-elected in November 2018 to a full term, which expires at the end of 2024. Trustee, or now President Hussein Barry, has served on the board for eight years. He initially served from 2010 to 2014 and was elected again in November 2016 to a term which lasts through 2022. Trustee Mary Lane was first elected to the board in November 1999, but did not serve in 2008. She has 19 years of board experience and her current term expires at the end of 2020. Trustee Michael, Dr. Michael Mead was elected in November 2014 and has five years of board experience. His current term expires at the end of 2020. Trustee and former president Mary Petlichkoff, who we just recognized, has served on the board for nine years. She was first elected in 2006 and served from 20, uh, 2007 to 2010. She returned to the board after being elected again in November 2014. Her current term expires at the end of 2020. 
Trustee Adol Mozek was appointed to the board in April 2019. He will serve until uh, elections are certified. That's a key thing. We, we're used to this. Certified in the November election when the winning candidate for the partial term will join the board to fill the remaining two years of the seat that was vacated by former trustee Fadwa Hamoud. We know balancing that uh, life between this job, your regular job, family, and, com and commitments in the community can be very challenging. Many people think that being a board member is a full-time job with a salary and that you have an office at ASC. I've heard that before. <laughs> and a phone when, number, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when in reality, all the time you spend fulfilling your duties as trustees goes far beyond your regular work day. Each trustee puts in many hours of their own personal time well beyond the small stipend of compensation. Much of that personal time that the board members commit to this job is done outside of the school, excuse me, of the school environment. It's not unusual for a trustee to spend time talking with neighbors on the porch, taking a few minutes to chat with a parent at a grocery store, or meeting with community members over a cup of coffee. Although they have busy schedules and many professional and personal commitments to fill, even our board trustees need time to recharge and collect their thoughts. Tonight, and I think Joanne has passed it around, Return. we present you with a, sm <laughs> a small token of our appreciation for all the work you do for the students in our classrooms. This portable charging stick will not only keep your phone charged throughout your busy day, it will remind you how important it is to take time to recharge your own battery. Hopefully you did that over the holidays as well. <laughs> And this reusable bag, there's a bag, is not only an eco-friendly way to collect your groceries and help eliminate the use of plastic bags, it too is a reminder to always take the time to collect your thoughts, collect feedback from our community, and most importantly, hopefully your experience as a board trustee for the Dearborn Public Schools will allow you to collect a lifetime of fond memories. Again, our most sincere, on behalf of everyone here, our most sincere pre appreciation and thanks to all of you for your commitment, to make the Dearborn Public Schools a great place of learning for all children. I truly commend and thank you. Let's, get, let's show some thank you. Thank you very much. Very thoughtful. Thank you very much. Next item, please. We've done acknowledgement of donations, so approval of minutes are next. Approval of the following Dearborn Board of Education meetings. Policy Committee meeting December 9, 2019. Executive session closed litigation December 9, 2019. Executive session closed expulsion 20, December 9, 2019. Regular P12 meeting December 9, 2019. Recommended action, make any necessary corrections and move approval of these minutes. So moved. Support. We have a motion support. Are there any corrections? Are there any objections? Hearing none, please attach a unanimous roll call vote. Thank you.